Good morning, and thank you for joining us. I'm glad we opened with that video. It gets your heart pumping, and it reminds us of the historic nature of the mission that we are about to embark upon. We're here today to talk about Artemis II, and we together have a front row seat to history. We're returning to the moon after over 50 years uh, during the Apollo program, the Apollo era, and we are going back to the moon. Now, this is a series of tests, Artemis is. Uh, Artemis I was a 25-day mission. It was a great success where we demonstrated the capabilities of the SLS rocket, the Orion spacecraft, and all of the supporting uh, operational and ground systems. We were able to test out those capabilities in a real deep space environment. And so now here we are moving on to Artemis II. Artemis II is a 10-day test flight. Uh, we will be launching four crew, our friends, Commander Reed Wiseman and Pilot, Vic, Pilot Victor Glover and Mission Specialist Christina Coach and Canadian Space Agency and Mission Specialist Jeremy Hansen. And that, that them, along with our ground teams, we are going to be working together to execute this mission. But let me emphasize that this is a test flight. And so the activities that we do together, we are going to learn from them. And so while Artemis I was a great success, there are new systems and new capabilities that we will be demonstrating on Artemis II, including the life support systems, the display uh, capabilities, software, and et cetera. We'll be taking lessons learned that we learned from Artemis I and incorporating that into Artemis II, and then building upon what we learned from the last mission. This is a stepped approach, and all that we learned from Artemis II, we will build upon that to prepare us for our first crewed landing on the surface of the moon for Artemis III. Now, there are some things that we're doing for Artemis II. Uh, we can talk a little bit about uh, what that mission will look like. Uh, this is going to be a free return trajectory. And what that means is, as a mitigation, we are going to essentially set the course uh, when we do the translunar injection burn on day two um, to use physics, the Earth and, and moon gravity, to make sure that we can return the crew um, without having to make major course uh, corrections, uh, propulsion burns. Uh, this is something that we've experienced before. Uh, if you recall in your history, we did that on Apollo 8 and Apollo 13. And so when you look at this map, we go from uh, launch uh, and then the boosters, of course, which provide about 75% of the thrust that we need in order to be able to get the spacecraft aloft. Uh, once we do that, and of course, uh, the uh, RS-25 engines burn, uh, then we're going to jettison the boosters, uh, as well as uh, the launch abort systems. Uh, once we get through uh, main engine cutoff, then we're gonna do uh, an apogee raise burn, and a perigee raise, apogee raise maneuver, and a perigee raise burn. Uh, and then we're gonna demonstrate uh, a rendezvous proximity operations demonstration, and I think uh, my colleagues are gonna talk a little bit about that. That's going to be critical to ensure that we can control two bodies in close proximity to one another as we prepare to do something similar on Artemis III when we get ready to move the crew from the SLS Orion into our landing system in preparation for landing. And then after we uh, dispose of the upper stage, the ICPS, uh, we're going to do some checkouts of some of our life support systems in HEO, or high Earth orbit. And then we commit to translunar injection. We then make our path out to the moon, around the moon, and then a return back home. Uh, once we get to uh, the entry interface, uh, once we hit the atmosphere, uh, then all that's left to do is splash down and to safely recover our crew. Our job is not only to launch this crew, but to make sure that we return our friends home safely. So there's a couple other things I wanna talk about. 
Um, I'd like to talk about uh, the mission management team. The mission management team will be activated about two days before the launch. Now, the mission management team is responsible for the overall risk management and critical decisions at key points during the mission. And that team is going to be made up of senior leaders and technical experts who understand uh, the risk that we have been uh, mitigating and thinking through and some uh, uh, accepting uh, as we uh, lead up to the mission uh, and then be able to uh, support that and lead that during the mission. Uh, but the real-time decision-making, uh, a lot of that will be handled by my launch and flight uh, and return recovery colleagues sitting next to me, and they'll be talking a little bit more about their jobs during this mission. Uh, we'll start at Kennedy Space Center, and then we will transition here to Johnson Space Center after the proximity operations demonstration on lunch day one. And then from then on, we'll meet daily, or they'll meet daily until the crew is safely returned. And so one more question that I often get asked is, when will we actually launch? The agency has made a commitment uh, to launch no later than April of 26, and we intend to keep that commitment. We're also, though, working to accelerate um, as much as we can in terms of the preparations and the operations pr pr preparation uh, to potentially as early as February. But we want to emphasize that safety is our top priority. And so as we work through these uh, operational preparations, as we finish stacking the rocket, we're continuing to assess uh, to make sure that we do things in a safe way. And once we get through some of those key integration points, uh, once we get ready through some of those test prep activities, uh, we'll be able to fully assess where we are. Um, now, the process that we go through in, in order to be able to uh, set that um, is we understand where our progress is uh, in terms of stacking of the rocket and our ops planning and preparation, our training planning and preparation. Um, and then we take a look at the potential launch periods that are available to us. Uh, the launch periods, which is the days, and essentially that falls about uh, monthly days available to us, uh, as well as the windows within those days that are available that are suitable for us to be able to launch. And we take a look at our technical readiness. We take a look at um, potential constraints, uh, technical constraints. And we also, of course, take into consideration orbital mechanics, the physics, of the Earth relative to the moon, the trajectory that we have prepared and set out for ourselves, and any range constraints, um, any Earth and space weather, all of these we put together to make an assessment of what is available to us to be able to execute on this mission. And as we get closer, we're narrowing that down, and we'll be ready to talk about that very soon. And so I'll just uh, conclude by saying that we're making preparations. And when we are ready to safely launch, uh, we are going to accelerate as much as we can to do so. We'll be able to execute this mission, and it is our uh, plan and our desire to be able to bring our crew safely home.